Boom, we're back. All right, today's giveaway, Maps Strong. This is a strongman-inspired workout program. Here's the deal with Maps Strong. When you follow the program, there's a couple areas of your body that really do stand out. Your posterior chain, your back and your butt. It's a great workout program. Improve your workout capacity. And one of you lucky viewers will get it for free if you do the following. Leave a comment the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on your notifications. If we pick your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to Map Strong. Also, before we start this awesome show, Maps Anabolic and the No BS Six Pack Formula have been combined in a bundle and discounted tremendously. Right now, you can get both for $59.99, and there's only three days left for this promotion. 72 hours, and then it's gone. After 72 hours, the price goes up by over $100. So if you're interested in signing up or you want to learn more, head over to mapsoctober.com. All right, here comes the show. Hey, I wanted to uh, give a little shout out or some props to uh, T Nation. Read a great article the other day. I don't know if it was a new article. Sometimes they republish old articles, but it brought up an exercise that I've actually done in the past and I haven't done in a long time or forgot about. What's that one guy that writes for them? It's his last name, like Thibodeau? Thibodeau or yeah. Thibodeau or whatever. Smart dude. Yeah. I really like the guy. Thibodeau. And yeah, I think just... he was the author of it, but yeah. it was a bicep exercise. All right, so let me explain so people know what I'm talking about. So. Obviously, the bicep flexes the elbow, so we know that, right? Curl. But a lot of people don't realize that the bicep supinates yeah. the hand, too. So this is a offset cable curl. So in other words, instead of holding the handle so oh, that the, you're it's on here. The, like you're on the... Yes, the handle. Yeah. You hold the handle, and then the cable comes out to here, so that supinating it also provides resistance. And then when you come up, because you have to supinate with the extra resistance, you get a crazy squeeze well, have at you the seen, top. Have you seen, well, I don't know if there's a name for it either, where you where you just grab the dumbbell. One-sided? On, yeah, yes. on, on one side more, so you have to kind of, to try and keep it level and balanced, right? Throws a little bit more of that. That squeeze. On, on the wrist pronation. Right? Oh, yeah. Or so supination, so I was me. messing around. I did hmm. a little bit of that with the cable. Yeah. The squeeze is- I've never done it with the cable before. The squeeze is insane. So you just basically, you take the handle, and instead of grabbing the actual handle, handle you grab like the canvas part that attaches the handle so yeah. it's like this and then the cable comes out on the pinky side right okay so it's like if i curl it without supinating it would be a hammer curl right but then what i do is i i supinate really hard that extra especially at the top oh man the squeeze are is you, crazy now when you go back down are you going back to a neutral grip yes okay so you go back to a neutral grip and then you and i supinate on the way up uh, okay interesting oh, wow. but that extra resistance at the top especially at the very very top huh you can't go very heavy. Yeah, I'm, uh, have you seen um, uh, Chris Duffin's like dumbbell? It's like three pronged. Uh, oh yeah, no. and it's interesting. It's kind of like the same concept as same. those those uh, almost those bells that you put your right right. Yeah, somewhat like that, and it gives like this totally different loading, sort of on the top and the back of the arm. Like so, it has sort of like an asymm asymmetrical kind of a load to it. It looked interesting. I, I thought. Well, it looks like you could out. actually. Because it has like three, if I'm, you, it's the one that has like three, three bars. Three different handles. Yeah, yeah, it's three different handles. So I think you can grab like in it. You can grab oh, on, yeah. the out, in it, you, on the outside yeah. of it. Oh, interesting. And you've seen those bells before, right? Where you, you're, the bell is like. Yeah, it looks like a big metal, uh, uh, like boxing glove or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, but it's then, like a Mega Man. So his, uh, gives <laughs> you, his gives you that weight distribution there, but then also in other places too, because you can grab in like three different. You know what? Are those the, his? I didn't know. He, did he? Yeah, I think he came out with those. He, he had that ah. and then the uh, the shoulder rock. There you go. Right it's there. called the Caillou Bell, but it's kind of spelled weird. <clears throat> Q-Bell. Q-Bell. Yeah, Q-Bell. Yeah. You know what that reminds me of, the way he spelled it? It reminds me of Hagen dazs like a lot of people don't realize, Hagen Dazs is an American brand. <laughs> it's an American brand that yeah. tried to look foreign. Yeah, they're yeah. like, we're going to make it look like it's some foreign. So we can charge nice all the money. Yeah. Yeah. Put, put some umlaws on there. Yeah. And yeah. You're, you're ready to go. Yeah. Like That's what he did with yeah, that. It's, bro. It's, <laughs> I mean, doubles the sales. Just yeah, you know, it's, you know, you can charge more expensive. Like, Ooh, like, oh, it's this is imported yeah. from yeah. somewhere. Yeah. This is uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, engineering from Norway. So yeah. let me just. Yeah, see how he has his? Yeah, interesting. You know, a lot of people don't, I mean, we never really think about this, right? Because we're used to dumbbells, barbells, and cables. But where the weight is loaded, like, for example, here's another great exercise. Because kettlebells have specific exercises. But sometimes if you adapt kettlebells to bodybuilding exercises, yeah. you get a very different feel. Sure. Mm -hmm. For example, kettlebell flies with the weight on the outside of your hand. 
and then you bring it down and the weight obviously the way that it's distributed you get more tension higher in oh, I the love rep. the pull of that you know yes. in this, it really like enhances that stretch portion yes. of the lift well, or even shoulder presses which I think you almost always do shoulder oh, yeah. presses yeah, I, you rarely that. and it I mean when you have the kettlebell resting on the back of the wrist it helps pull you in that that natural position that yep. you should be in right because everybody's kind of forward and so if you have a dumbbell it's everyone's gonna have this tendency to yeah. press forward whereas the weights distributed on the back it kind of has this natural pull yeah. you back which puts you in a, i think a yeah. better alignment i remember so. years ago dude working out in a neighbor's garage we had a neighbor who let's see i was 15 maybe and he was in his 50s but he used to bodybuild back in the day mm -hmm. And, you know, we, he, we knew each other and he knew that I started working out and I was really into it. And so he goes, oh, I, you should, you know, come lift in my garage or whatever. I went in his garage and he had the most old school weights I've ever seen. He had dumbbells where the, the ends of them were round, like no the way. ones you see in cartoons. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So he had <laughs> like, some like little uh, cannonballs, but like fused in the middle. Yes. That's what those were his dumbbells. Amazing, and they were so weird, right? Yeah, but also cool. No, like, I, I love those, like you know the uh, cartoons. We got the uh, the bomb that's just like has like a little wick, you know. That's <laughs> always like this cannonball thing. Yeah, you know? dude. Like, yeah. Did you that's know what, what it, to lift? Speaking of cartoons, did you know what an anvil was when you watch cartoons, or uh, did you think, dude, the anvil was always come from the sky? Yeah, you know, smashing people. I remember the first time I actually saw an anvil. I was on yeah. a job with my dad, and there was an anvil there, and I looked at it, and then it dawned on me. That's what they're throwing in the. Cartoons. What are they? What are they primarily used for? Uh, Hammering, to shaping metal. Yeah. Or, oh, I thought yeah. it was always a counterweight. No, it's a blacksmith. Blacksmith. Tool. Yeah. So they 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 form and fashion like uh, I don't know what kind of metal. Oh yeah, but, you're right. Yeah, That's, horseshoes, they, 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 yeah, swords, swords bit, right? whatever. Yeah, horseshoes. Yeah. 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 Old tools are really cool. I also thought it was used as a counterweight. You no, know, Mike. The, the original reason for it. My no great grandfather was a blacksmith in really? Montana. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Interesting. So yeah, interesting. he did like horseshoes. I, I guess so. Yeah. Oh, you wow, that's really cool. I, well, I, I didn't know him. So. That was a very specialized skill it back was. in the day. One that you pass on to your kids and and so on. That yeah. is really really. Have cool. you ever seen a, a horse get shoed? You see that like, on they, TV? Yeah, they the like, drive the nails like into their like into their foot. It looks so like, it looks like it, it looks like it hurts. It but does. It, I mean, it doesn't hurt them. I my my dad had an old level. So you know the the current levels that most people use has got oh, the, little, yeah. the little bubble in the middle. Mm -hmm. You know the little thing with water and there's a bubble. Wasn't that mercury for a while? I don't know, uh. but I know it's I don't know, right? But we know what that looks like. And then they now they use lasers and stuff. My dad had one that had a hanging pendulum. So uh, yeah. and they the call that a plumb line. A plumb yeah, line, it's like yeah. a plumb line. And then he talked about what was that for? What? Leveling. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then he talked about the how they would level big, 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 big floors, and the way they would do it is, and I'm gonna butcher this, is they would fill a tube with water and half water, half air, and then they'd line the this tube up. They'd put the tube all the way across the floor what? and use the water level as a way to level the entire floor. I don't know. Oh, so you could see how the water set. So yeah. that was- like There's more, more to the, it, I'm sure. Is that because we didn't have like level? I mean, we had levels back when your dad was doing stuff like that. Was it just we didn't have the- That's the way they would do big, big floors when he was a kid. Uh. And Interesting. Yes. Yeah, oh, there's the plumb line right there. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, a, like a lot of this stuff is ancient uh, technology. Like the Romans, they made aqueducts that brought water from the Alps all the way down to Rome. Zero plumbing, and it was all through balance. It was all through gravity. Uh -huh. it, all the way up from up there to, and some of them to this day still bring water. Oh yeah. Down the and Ro are still Romans standing. had it down. They yeah. were they were pretty pretty, pretty ahead of their I, time. I, I, you, you wonder who's smarter. Us who like are our like our era, you know, that builds upon you stuff like this, or the first person to come up with that. Yeah. Well, that's the think thing. Of, think of the think of the Different mind you, focus. Yeah, think of the mind you have to have when you're like building a building or you're putting together building a house back then. You need straight lines. Like, how do I like? And you have no, you didn't have those. No, I kind of come up yeah. from scratch. Yeah, yeah and and c create something like if that. If you ever go to Rome and you get a tour of the Colosseum, mm -hmm. they'll explain like how uh, they they used to have. They would be able to produce shade in there. They could fill it with thousands of people and get thousands of people out within like 40 minutes or something like that. Yeah. yeah. They could flood it with water for, for mock naval battles. Yeah. I mean, it's all like yeah. wild. Are you guys watching the, speaking of like technology and building and stuff like that, are you guys staying up on the, like the 3D printing on houses and stuff? You know, there's more and more of these communities that are Really? Going yeah, yeah. No, last I saw was, I think it was in Mexico, they were starting to kind of like try to make more affordable housing. I want to say it's in three U.S. states now, maybe Doug can 
fact check me. I th I think that's what I saw. I was watching. I was actually talking to um my my mom's husband and and her were up here up visiting, and uh, we were just talking about random stuff like that. We were just talking about the housing market, this and that. And I said, you know, one of the things that I think is really interesting as we're seeing this rapid growth in, or the price of the house just get keep going and going, and getting crazy. Uh, at the same time, we're also, you know, getting more advanced with these 3D printing houses. And right now they can print like a whole house for like 10 grand. That's crazy. So, it, yeah. so now is it like a big, it's a big machine and they probably use some kind of comp composite material? I mean, yeah, to... it looks like a, it's like a, like a, like a moldable. It's uh, like a bead that this machine kind of runs over. I think it's like a concrete. It is concrete. It's all, well, it's yeah. like a type of concrete, but they, you, it's, it's pliable for like the first 24 hours. So it like, cause right now, so I mean, and here's the thing, right? So they have to, and I don't know what the, like right now it's probably not realistic and feasible to do this a bunch, right? We're at this still the early stages. Yeah. Cause I mean, just setting up the 3D printer is mm -hmm. like an right. ordeal right. because if the 3D printer is on, and think about it, you're building a house out on some dirt and land, like yeah. it has to be so perfectly level mm -hmm. or just think about that, what <laughs> would do with the house. Uh -huh. So in order to, to 3D print an entire house, the, you have to- It'll the, turn into a Tim Burton house. Yeah, like so it still, <laughs> they, it still looks a little, you know, wonky and a little ugly, but I mean, it's there. Oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah that's right. That. That's exactly it. People, okay, people it really like don't. Soft serve. I had a client that was really into this tech. Uh, this was maybe five years ago, no longer, eight years ago, and he was explaining to me how 3D printing is going to completely change everything. Completely. Now, obviously, the tech has to get there, but imagine if you yeah, have- Yeah, but look how close it is already. Oh, yeah. And now, that's on a track. That's a huge machine. Imagine when these are mobile machines communicating with each other, and they're driving around and 3D printing shit for Yeah, them. imagine when you, you'll be able to just, okay, get 100 acres and Download just, the plan. Yeah, download the plan and just go all of a sudden, you know- 500 houses get built on there. Dude, yeah. that and, is wild. And then provide housing for like super dirt well, cheap. You know that they also can 3D print uh, like tissues. They'll 3D print cells so they can start. So And they're talking about in the future how they'll be able to 3D print organs based off of your cells. Right. So they could print you a heart, a liver, you know, whatever. Off the cell. Or another one is where they'll be able to 3D print drugs. So on a molecular level, That's they'll be able to fine. create do the cool stuff. Your yeah. own, you know. Have you seen that before, Doug? <laughs> the cool stuff. I haven't. Yeah, isn't that cool? Super cool. Yeah, yeah. we were we went down the rabbit hole and there because they my my mom and him had no idea either. I'm like, oh yeah, no, we're we're three D printing houses now. Yeah, and I mean, the, obviously the the three D printer works around the clock. So once you start it and set it, you, everyone goes home and it just thing just keeps building. I start paying attention because there was like this competition where uh, a few of these companies were trying to get the contract for Mars. Oh, I saw that. Did you see that? I did. What? Yeah. So they were all competing to try and see which was the most efficient and could withstand the most, uh, you know, crazy elemental forces yeah. and everything. Yeah. Because you can't make a mistake. Like one mistake, no mistake. and you're done. Yeah. Because they're on Mars. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So they'd like... Yeah, they'd, they'd add all this stress. I mean, was it like uh, they would they would smash it with something like like some kind of like uh, I don't know. It was a crane was like dropping something on top yes. of the house to see how much pressure it would take before the thing broke. Yep. And uh, there was like two that stood out, and then one got the contract. So what'll be interesting to me is what this does to like a regular house, right? So when this happens, and this has got to be five, maybe ten years out tops before this is realistic. Before mm. this can provide now. It is definitely not going to be up to the standard of a custom house that's built for you by hand. Not or yet. That. But so do you think that it will just create this crate, like that'll become like, um, like they have a house that's built by hand. It will be still really, really expensive. Oh, yeah, or you dude. can go like, no. or do you think it'll bring them closer together where it'll bring the house built by hand way down? Well, okay, look at cars, right? Mm. So cars, a lot of uh, mass produced cars are automated. But the really expensive ones, right? You go buy a Ferrari, what's one of the selling points? Handmade. Handcrafted, hand-stitched, all that stuff. Yeah. But mass production is all, you know, through machines. So I would imagine that it would be mass production of homes. That the, especially high density ho uh, housing, yeah. That they'll just print high density. So that's housing. what I'm saying. So you think that it, it, they'll still be so it'll they'll still be a huge discrepancy in price. Yeah. It's not gonna just because it now will have hundreds or thousands more affordable homes for people. It doesn't mean that that the, the the Ferrari price will come down. It'll still stay up there yeah. because it's it's that's handcrafted. What, that's what I think. That's, yeah, that's gonna be neat. Mean, I mean, yeah. imagine the, the I just I see this and I think you know, especially being in California with the the homeless crisis. You know, yeah. I think that imagine if we could just have 
a, a find somewhere where you could build a hundred of these you suckers. Get rid of the bureaucracy first. I know. That's oh, all. that's, well, that's yeah. the. That's, yeah, yeah. Why you got to poop on my face? I'm just saying. <laughs> I want to be all. I, love, I want to be all positive. I love innovation, bro. <laughs> like, uh, apparently, our uh, yeah, yeah, our government doesn't. <laughs> so. That's hilarious. <laughs> <a letter. laughs> I hate it. Anyway, I wanted to. Uh, so I wanted to, to give some kudos to Andrew. Well, two things. First, he won a bet this morning. Andrew? So he did. So he's a younger generation, right? So he's he's a compared to us. He's a kid. He's yeah. a grown man, but he's, he's a little kid. baby boy. Yeah. And uh, so I'm wearing the shirt, right? So I come out and I'm like, if you know what movie this is, I'll give you five bucks. Didn't realize the freaking movie. Was <laughs> <on the podcast. laughs> oh man, he on got shirt, you, dude. dude. <laughs> on the shirt. But if I cover the name here and you see that, would you, I mean, you guys remember Amity? I, I don't think I would have got that. Mm. Yeah. If it didn't say Jaws right on it, you know? yeah. but I, like Andrew, oh, I'm, uh, you know, like I would have, I would have seen that. Idiot. <laughs> hey, do you know what this is? Right, written right there, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the dork. Anyway. Also, I want to give him kudos because uh, Andrew, being part of the executive team yesterday, was part of his first. He did. Uh, oh, now you're gonna bring that up. discussion. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I, yeah, I I was like a level five. I think we discussed. It. Yeah, you know, what? I want to say this. There. One thing I appreciate about uh, about you guys a lot is that we can have those conversations and they're still productive, yeah. and people don't feel like they can't share how they feel or whatever. Yeah. And he, that was his first one that he was a part of. And yeah. I, you know, as we're doing our thing, I'm sure he's sitting back there like. Okay. I can see him in the corner. I can see him in the corner of my eye, like a couple times. Go, Am I, should I get up and leave, or should I say, "Got yeah, like up, one he foot, sat down, like, he got up, he sat it, down." Am I, yelling, supposed, am I supposed to be in here yeah, over one yeah. of these or whatever? You so. sit back down. Yeah. yeah, sit there and take this uncomfortable <laughs> shit. No, but that was uh, Andrew. Just so you know, that was a level five. Yeah. It's gotten to level ten before. <laughs> just so you know. Well, the, yeah. the the truth is, I mean, that's the one thing that I've actually always loved about this team. It's why we've worked. Uh, I think, it, and it's, we've made it. I think one of the number one things when I talk to somebody about this business now what we seven almost eight years or whatever we've been doing this together is they're like there's four of you guys i know how do you get four along? yeah how does how does that work like who decides what and this you know that's but and that used to happen a lot we have that's been a long time since we actually have had like a you yeah know, back and forth and but i love it i mean i really do and i love that n nobody takes that stuff personal like it's mm -hmm. not it's never about I'm mad at you. You're yeah. mad at me, or anybody's mad at each other. It's like, dude, it's like, like, let's I, get better. I want to win. Yeah, yeah, we're a team here. Yeah. We're a win. We're a team, and it's like it's not about it, it, like me this or you that. It's literally like let's let's fucking get better as a team. And well, it's so it so reminds me of uh, you know when I'm dealing with the football team and everything, and just like trying. It, it's so hard to establish that culture because like it, you know I don't I just don't feel like a lot of kids grow up with that where, ability to you know, sit through that and like, uh, you know, have like intense conversations mm -hmm. without feeling like, oh, you know, they're attacking me and like, you, you know, I'm offended or whatever it is. Like, no, like sometimes you have to have hard discussions to realize like, okay, there's maybe some shortcomings here we got to address, you know? And well, so for me, it's always a sign, if, uh, at least like if, if I was in another partnership besides this one of the, how much the other people care and the passion like if you just curl up in a ball and get upset and like jesus i don't want that i want the pushback yeah. because then i know you care mm -hmm. like if you're passionate about it and you're going back and forth with me then it's like fuck yeah like that's i i mean i it's a mark cuban and you know there's a lot of people that 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 operate that way and i think that we do and well, i really appreciate that well the about. root is you know and trust that everybody's goal is the same right although maybe there's different opinions on what's going to get there ultimately what matters most is the goal right i think this is even the secret to like a successful marriage if you look at old couples who've been together yeah, for a long what time exactly i was thinking about when you just said that yeah like you know new couples often have to figure this out then at some point when you've been together a long time you trust that you're both on the same page and it's less personal it's more like yeah i'm mad and i disagree but i trust that we're both on the same page yeah we all do that so we can all fire at each other. But I know that, you know, Adam's just not being, it's, it's not Adam just being mean or Justin just being whatever. Yeah. It's like, okay, we all have the same goal. I'm whatever a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's so whatever today. You guys, yeah. like, hey, fuck, hey, whatever. Speaking of whatever, dude, yeah. did you did you take your pure this morning? Because yesterday, yeah. you had a you guys brain. Had, oh man, was that yesterday or the day moments. before? When did he? When did you have your brain for? You haven't had yesterday. that in a long time. No, wait, was it, no, it was two days ago because it was Wednesday. When I was yeah, a little bit of short circuit. You know what's funny? I didn't say I, anything. I'm sharp today. I didn't say anything to you after you did it, but I actually had 
that like a, a week or two ago. I think I actually mentioned to you guys that I was having like cloudiness. I yeah. And I noticed the same thing too. So that's really interesting that happened to you, right? It could afterwards. be a little bit of the sleep. It could be this and that. But I, dude, I, I swear every time though, if I'm like intentional about, uh, you know, like hydrating and then getting pure before I even do the podcast, I'm so much sharper. Yeah. And I, I kind of brought that up tongue in cheek, like, you know, some. Uh, some bit of a commercial opportunity, but like it's it's real. Like I, it's one of those things where I'm like, it became you know be between me having coffee. Obviously, we all know how addicted I am, but that's one of those things that like helps me to at least stay sharper and my memory recalls better. Yeah, it, you know what it, it reminds me of. I know the brain is not like a really like a computer. It's it's obviously far more complex and different. Yeah. But it reminds me of when you go to open a program in your computer. And it just freezes for a second. So like that's happened to me yeah. where I'm I'm thinking of something. There's, there's like a lag. Yes. I'm like huh? And then all of a sudden it's like your brain's like, all right, we're gonna the, here comes the the little yeah. hourglass thing or the. You know what? The, the move is what Justin did, which is just to say it. Like in the past, I yes. would I would freeze. Yes. And just lock up. And then I remember I used to do a coughing attack. Like that would get me out of it. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that's what you did. Yes, you do. Remember? Remember when we were on the one? The yeah. well, you didn't know that's it. A good when, move. It, well, it was right. So. <laughs> Remember when we were uh, shit? I should have thought of that. Remember when we were touring down? Honey, in, who's texting you right now? Yeah. Oh, this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, Ooh. we were in uh, L.A. This is actually this was when Sal and I went down to L.A. by ourselves. Oh and yeah, that's right. I we remember were, now. We were doing a a little tour right of like a podcast, and it was early days. And we were just doing a lot of them, and we we got to uh, Luke Story. That's yes. who was interviewing I us. This and uh, yeah, if you've been around long enough, you you could probably go back and have heard this. But I was like, yeah, mid thought, and I lost it, and then I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Hey. And then they gave me water and stuff. But it was really I I fucking lost my train of thought. Hey, after completely <laughs> lost my train of thought, and hey. I had no idea where I was going. Hey, you're brilliant. I'll tell can you I, something. Can dude. I just <laughs> tell you right now? I just get stuck there, like oh god, can, the panic can, sets in. Can and, I just tell you how impressed I was? I remember that specifically because yeah. I thought for sure. Because we went and got him water and everything. Yeah, and they yeah. drank the water and then we were all good. And then yeah. afterwards, I'm like, damn, that sucks that you started coughing. He's like, I didn't. He goes, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember, I remember going, oh, shit, bro, that's really smart. Yeah. That was really. You know what I do? Yeah. I just make up some shit. I'll just, I'm going somewhere. I'm going to talk about something else now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take, a, say, take a laugh. Where are you going? Yeah. But the move is actually really well, where you did, which is just like, man, I just lost my train of thought. And then yeah. one of us know to insert and come right away. Right. And, so. and you guys normally, like, ha you know, take over and hammer me about it and it becomes this whole thing but like yeah i was like i've learned to just address the fact of what's going on like real time and that way it just doesn't make it as crazy awkward you know because yeah. like otherwise you're just uh, uh, that's, that's dude, the worst crazy awkward i have a crazy awkward conversation for you guys or uh -oh. just a topic to talk about so oh, katrina sent this to me this is in our backyard here los gatos i don't know if anybody's list saw the news yesterday no for, this mom is 47, or not a mom, 47 year old lady, uh, Los Gatos lady, and she now lives in Idaho. But they're 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 coming after her right now because she was using Snapchat to lure teenage kids to her place, like 14 to 17 years old, and encouraging them to get drunk Ooh. and drink and have sex. And everything. I saw this. It was in Los Gatos. Yes, it was in Los Gatos. Like she was just putting them together and yes. watching them. So it started with her just like you know talking and I, I actually didn't see what she looked like i'm assuming she was fuck? probably an attractive lady and she was like Bro, flirting with I them and get, getting them enticing them to come to the house letting them know that they can drink underage and stuff like that and then bringing them condoms and stuff and encouraging them to have sex it was and worse stuff. than that there was yeah. a part what? where there was a girl and she was like yes, really and she, drunk and she and she, and she encouraged like multiple multiple was guys she an understudy of just lane maxwell dude, what's happening dude it's worse than what, what it sounds like she there was a, a couple instances where there was a girl that was really drunk that's right and and she'd bring teenage boys into the room, and the girl's like, "Why are you doing this?" And oh then she'd go, "She's right. fucked though, because everyone's bitch. underage. It's not like she's doing that with like 18, 19 year olds. No, this is she's an doing evil, that fourteen to sixteen. This is an evil person that did Dude. that. Evil or just weird and twisted, like just getting. getting That's on. her right there. Oh, there's. A, I haven't seen her yeah. yet. Can I tell you something right now? She looks like a person that would do that. Psycho. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. I just look at her face right now. Look at it. She doesn't even dye her roots, dude. Yeah. Come on. Let's help with that. <laughs> She's definitely suspect. She's right, Vicky? What do you think? You know what I'm saying? Damn. If you keep your, you keep your hair like that, you're suspect as fuck, right? Wow. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah, the, the, the I don't know if the picture of the house, I don't know if you can see her house, though, but it looked like she had like a mansion. So it looked like she had this bad, oh, is that her house? Yeah, it looks like Oh, that. that's not the house. By the way, she's in prison, so I don't think they give her root to... Uh, 
you know, privileges. Oh, she's, she's in? Well, look at her. She's this in all a just jumpsuit. Happened. This is, the, I mean, you're all looking at one day ago pictures, Doug. This yeah, just okay. happened. The, she's okay. already had those bad roots, Doug. Okay. Yeah. No, 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 no. no so uh, that's disgusting. Throwing she's evil. And you know what's weird? I feel like more yeah, and that's more. That's a picture I saw. Dude. Yeah. Well, Los Gatos is, that's Los Gatos High School, dude. Oh. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a mansion. I've never been there. So. Yeah. I, wor I worked. <laughs> my studio was in Los Gatos, so I worked there for uh, about 16 uh, okay. years. Okay. Yeah, Isn't so, that crazy, though? Dude. Yeah. So it seems like more and more these predators are women. I never remember reading about women being predators, but I read about this teacher yeah. who had this teenage student of hers. Uh, she performed fellatio on him. I read another one that was sleeping with the student, and it's more and more. It's the it's women that are doing this at these ages. Yeah, and maybe it's that's not new. Maybe just now it, it's easier yeah, to catch somebody. I doubt with, that was reported. Yeah, I was gonna day. say yeah, I'm probably not yeah. reported. If you're a 15 year old boy and your hot older teacher is trying to get you to do things well, like, yeah. I mean, let's be honest, you ain't gonna keep it to yourself. So of course, it well, gets that, and that's probably so. Right. I would th think that this has always happened, but because of the way social media is and and the way kids can yeah. gossip virtually now, I think that that's pro stuff like this probably surfaces pretty quick and i don't even remember what i don't know if you read on the article or not or you did because you read it, it sounds like it, how she got caught i don't even know i don't know she was doing some other dumb shit too she was letting her kid these kids drive her car at, at school oh yeah and one of the kids was driving the car two kids were hanging on the back one, one of them fell, fell and got knocked out like what yeah dude like she was just dude, doing who is this lady yeah she's it, crazy yeah it sounds like she's just a little a little twisted was she was married it, or what was her husband no i don't think she was married but I just saw that. Isn't that wild? Yeah, that was super wild, dude. Man. That I would I would beat the lady if this was my kid that went over there. I, I'm sorry to say that, but holy cow, man, you're an adult. Anyway, uh, it's making me angry. Yeah, I got a funny article to bring up. I'm gonna change the energy a little bit. <laughs> uh, they did a study that showed Justin, you're gonna love this. Oh sweet, uh, I got something that Justin will love too. Really? Yeah, oh, November cool. 9th, uh, Evanescence is coming to San me. Jose. Oh, <laughs> 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 I, want, I want everybody to know that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, especially if I'm there. Or I was gonna say, yeah. already front row tickets. Yeah. Evanescence is good, bro. I'm with you on that. I like him. I know. It's I mean, you just. Pleasure. I know you'll get caught rolling your window down, singing it out yeah. loud. I love it, it when I get in his car. Sometimes you know the radio turns on automatic, yeah. whatever. And Go you know the funny part about that with Justin is it's it's one extreme or the other. It's either death metal, yeah. like where it's like well, <laughs> when you yeah. in the car, or it's like Evanescence. Well, singing. see, Rocky from uh, Living Sacrifice is their uh, guitarist, so I feel like somewhat vindicated. Uh, you know? yeah. Evanescence is good. Yeah, I like them. No, I no, let's see. I, I agree yeah. too. So I got another one for you. So this is a study uh, that was done on class clowns. Okay, like okay. people that. According to scientists, wait, 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 were you now? Were were you guys admitted? Are you guys class clowns? Were you in school? I was. I was probably one of the class clowns. Yeah, I was. Uh, you yeah. too. Yeah. And Justin for, for sure, right? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I, I got. That's the only time I got sent the principal. Yes. Was, yeah. Same here. Multiple I get, times. I would get kicked out all the yeah. time because I was uh, being a jackass. I would make a joke, or I mean, okay, I'll tell you the worst one I ever did. <laughs> All right. So this is one of the worst ones I ever did. Uh, it, it sounds silly, but it was bad because I'm sure it hurt the teacher's feelings. So we, I had a journalism class, and the teacher was – I hated her. She was such a – whatever. She was just a mean person and wasn't paying attention. Would show up late to class all the time. Yeah. Big lady, right? Well, anyway, she showed up 10 minutes late or 15 minutes to class like she would often do, which was annoying. And she would come in super flustered. Again, big lady. So she – came in and just would burst the door open because she was like, so she burst the door open. She's wearing this big red shirt. And I said, <laughs> oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. Huh? Oh, wow. Yeah, dude. Wow, that like was the bad. Guy, dude. I got sent to the principal office too, but not for stuff like that. That's oh, mean, dude. That's bad. I got hey, the class oh, died. Yeah. And oh, she yeah. like if she didn't get it at first, and then she got it. <laughs> oh, man. We did the out, last dude. time I got sent to the That's principal's awesome. office that I remember was uh, in our chemistry class. And, uh, you know, in, 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 in chemistry, do you guys remember there was always like videos, at least for us, like once a week, there was like a video that we'd watch. And I, uh, this was like the, the era of universal remotes starting to happen. So oh. I had bought a universal remote and I'd be in the back of the classroom and I would change the channel. <laughs> oh, that's so he so would, awesome. he would put it on and then he'd go sit down and then I would uh, change the channel real quick. And then he'd be, go back up and dude. do it about five times of doing that before he realized that's somebody so was great. out there and changed the channel. Wow. I got caught, I got busted for dude, that. There's so many of them I can't talk about, <laughs> you know, I'll talk. 
I'll tell you guys later. But, <laughs> the, um, can't make the podcast. Yeah, but one of them was like, and and two now in, in today's climate and everything, like especially like oh my god, I well one of them I was just so bored and we were we were sitting in class and we had to read like um it wasn't Hamlet it was uh, Romeo and Juliet, and so like. She was just so, so the laziest teacher ever, right? Like, just makes, okay, you no, know, you play the part of, you know, Mercutio, you play the part of Romeo, but so I'm like, so bored. I'm like, you know, I'll, I'll take one of the parts. And so I'm like, Mercutio, and I decided to just, you know, give a bit of a lispy uh, uh, <laughs> accent, if you will, right? Uh, yeah, so it was very obviously like I was like yeah. portraying a, a certain. Yeah, you, you know sure, orientation, sure. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> so I was just going, and, and you know, class is dying laughing, whatever. She yelled at me so loud and like threw me out of the class, and it was it was all. Dude, bad. I got kicked out once because I was also a smartass, so I would not be paying attention or talking to someone, and teachers would try to catch. You know, teachers would try and catch and you. Answer it. Yeah, they'll ask a question. So what's the answer to you know number forty five, Sal? You know, and catch me off guard, thinking that I wouldn't know. Well, I always knew. So so I was talking with some some girl. Teacher's like, well, Sal. So what do you think about blah blah blah? Thinking I wouldn't know. So I stand up and I give a great answer, and she looks at me like, oh. And I said, you can't mess with me, son. Kicked out. So so according to scientists, that class clown from seventh grade may have been the brightest kid in the room. Oh, so there you go. vindication! It turns out that humor ability and overall intelligence are tightly linked in middle school age children, according to research published in the International Journal of humor research. So the quote is, we were particularly interested in the quality of humor made by children, but el but evaluated by adults. Parents and teachers should be aware that if their children or students frequently make good quality humor, it is highly likely that they have extraordinary intelligence. So I have a theory on go. that. I have a theory on wow. that, right? You have, If you're in class and you uh, are the class clown, it's not like you have this opportunity to write jokes and like you get the floor to say something. You have to be quick. Of course. And witty. So you have to piggyback off something the teacher said and then you throw something out there or that another kid said and you So I think it just it just highlights the the, the quick wittedness of mm -hmm. a, a kid at that age to be able to do that. Well and that part of the brain if you're developing it, that that early already, how much that, that favors you as you get older. Yeah, I think part of it too is like you know, the kids like not getting stimulated enough too, and is creating their own opportunities to kind of like you know entertain themselves yeah. in a sense because that's what happened a lot of times. I'm just like, dude, I'm so bored, so bored. Like I have to do something here. I have oh. to draw, you know, uh, you know, phalluses in the sky. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I on my piece of paper. I, 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 it was it was painful for me. High school was so painful, so freaking boring, and so you do that. But you know what? Along those lines. Comedians, some of the best comedians in the world, if you really break down what they're doing and what they're saying and how they're delivering what they're delivering, oh yeah, they're highly. It's a it's a very specialized form of intelligence, and I'll tell you what. Especially here's your evidence right here. Especially in men, if you ask a hundred women what qualities they find most humor's uh, desirable or attractive in man, humor's number one. Sense of humor's always, yeah. almost always at the top or top three. And so that goes to show you how valuable it is. And then you think, well, why is it so valuable? We're social creatures and humor breaks tension. It brings, it bonds people together. It's also a very effective way of communicating difficult subjects, which is one thing that can be like Dave Chappelle. Yeah. He, I know he's under fire by, you know, people right now, but the guy is so intelligent with delivering highly sensitive information, does it in such a very smart way mm -hmm. that, I mean, it requires a, re a really high level of intelligence. Yeah, it just takes a different perspective and, and it makes you think, you know, makes you like address something from a different uh, angle, which I, I, I appreciate. Oh, I think women are just smart too. They know that the first 30 years, even if you're sexy and got the body and you lay it down in the bedroom, like that's the first 30 years. I still got to live with you the next 30 you to 40. You better be funny. Because <laughs> <laughs> when that all shit goes and never like that, we're going to be sitting on a rocking chair for the next 30 years. Like, right. I hope as, I hope you can have a conversation to entertain me because <laughs> otherwise this is going to suck. Yeah, be boring as hell. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would say. That's anyway, my theory. Dude, so, uh, oh, yesterday I was going to tell you guys, so I, I ventured out and I was was able to see dune oh how was it it looks good can i just say right now this is going to be like probably my new favorite movie what? for the last like 10 Wait, years hold on i gotta ask a question yeah would you did you need to have watched dune before 
read the book, no. work in a complete no. no. You could be somebody just totally oblivious. So it's to the, the whole it's the story world. retold, basically. Yeah, and it's not okay. like they did in the first one where they smashed like three books in one and, and tried to like tell this like really long, elaborate story in a condensed amount of time. They took their time with the pacing was really good. Um, it was like phenomenal graphics. Like so, you have to see it in three D. We saw it in three D. Uh, and there's just like depth of scope. So you see like really far and you see like they have these really cool uh, helicopter. I don't want to ruin it, but like they have these, the, the technology in it is something I've never seen before. Really? Uh, with, uh, they're almost like dragonfly helicopters, dude. It's so sick. That's oh, okay. all I'm going to say. And then um, just the overall uh, story, the way that it was all played out, like it was believable. The actors were really good. I would have nothing but good things to say. Is this an edible movie or is this a movie? <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Okay. Sure. Oh, it it's like, is. Right, right. Right. <laughs> yes. The way he's explaining it, I'm like, 3D, he's really Is there a it. non-edible movie? How about that? Uh, I don't know if that's it. Is Damn. there? That's yeah. an even better That's something question. that you have to really <laughs> think uh, like clearly about. Wow, so that you now you've been going to the theater. I haven't been in the theater in years. Neither have I. Yeah. You know, and I... <sighs> I, I try to support it. I know it's like uh, like some people are scared to do that, but like I I just want it to exist still because yeah. it's such a different experience, especially for something like that. That's like such an epic scale, like that you need to be able to sit on a big ass screen and watch it, yeah. and, and have like that. Now, experience. do you have to wear a mask during the whole movie? No. Oh, you don't. No. Oh, um, are you supposed wait, to? Are you supposed you don't? to? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's I, I, better. I, didn't do I mean, does everybody come in wearing a mask, or what, what do you see right now? I mean, some do, because like in Santa Cruz, like that's been lifted, uh, so so the businesses get to choose whether or not they like enforce that. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, Santa Cruz actually like I'll give them you know some prob like they they crack down again for a while, but now that it's open again in terms of that, so because they've done a pretty good job of keeping the numbers oh, low. Shit. Well, well, speaking of things that are fun with edibles, uh, gaming, right? Uh, I It's exciting to see Felix Gray going after the gaming market. Have yeah. you seen that they're now putting their blue blocker Bro, glasses? It makes so much sense. In GameStop? Yep. Now, GameStop, I Best Buy, Target, they're starting to get out to... It makes, okay, so I this is something that I try to enforce with my son when mm -hmm. he plays video games. Same. Because you're on there, on the screen for hours, that's not going to be good for your eyes, especially if it's right before bed. Yeah. And I I would even I'm going to make a bet here or I'm going to make a prediction that they're going to tie this to better performance in video games. Sure. Yeah. So in other words, because high end eye coordination, but if your eyes start to fatigue because of the blue light, that'll start to decrease your performance. If they start to sign on these high level players and gamers, watch it be used as a way to improve uh, endurance in, in performance. Well, you know what would be fun, and, and actually it would be great for Felix Gray to get this from us, if you could convince your son to actually almost do like a, a you know, a week where he's like, okay, let him go. You know, let right. him do like, you know, four hour days of like he gaming. He would love this. Would I know, right? Test. I think he would love this to do this. You'd be like, listen, I need yeah. you to do this, son. I want you to play video games all day. Free yeah. Rain. Dad, no problem. Yeah. yeah. I got have it. him do that for like a week, I no glasses, this. and then actually do that and then have him report back the things that he noticed. And Dude, see if I swear to God, that kid, if if I let him, I if I let him do it, it would be bell to bell. It would be, you know, 9 a.m., to freaking midnight. I know. I have Straight. no idea. I have no idea how I'm going to handle that. Like, I know you guys are already in that world. So you guys are, have you just kind of set your boundaries. And I'm so torn on that because I, I didn't get regulated, but I also like to go outside as much yeah. as I like to play a video games. And so. it wasn't as fully immersive as it is now. Right. Well, okay. So <coughs> the, I'll tell you what I'm experiencing. So, and I saw this firsthand with uh, some clients of mine first. So I had some clients very close. I was very close with them and their son. And very good people. They were they homeschooled their kid. They were big in that whole movement or whatever. Mm -hmm. And part of their philosophy was this unschooling thing where mm -hmm. the kid drives the curriculum. And if they're into something, you try to encourage them to learn through it. And so their son was super into video games. And he would just he would he would just mash out on them and just be on them all the time. And I remember they were kind of like, oh man, I don't know, like, what are we gonna do about this? And, and should we allow him to continue? And I remember personally thinking like, nah, you got to get him off. Like it's way too much. Well, what ended up happening is the kid turned 16, 17 and naturally started to want to hang out with friends. Anyway, today the kid is an adult. He's got his own podcast. He's a personal trainer. He's a, he's a self-starter. Turned out very well. I'm noticing with my son too now, now that he's like 16, 
he's making plans and wanting to meet up with his girlfriend and wanting to hang out with people in person. Mm. So I'm not as worried as I was when he was like 13 or 14 when I'm like, oh my God, is he going to be stuck right. in my basement until he's, you know, whatever, playing video games all day long? So I think it's less of a, it's it's definitely less of a fear now for me than it was. Yeah, before. I would imagine where Justin's at with his boys versus where you're at. You 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 Even though your son probably does it more, you probably could relax a little bit about it because now he's really getting, getting... Yeah, he's making plans all the time. Yeah, with people. and he's doing that himself. Yeah, I think, well, it's just kind of funny because I've noticed um, like my son's sales ability has gone up tremendously. What? Uh, <laughs> because I put so many restrictions on it, you know? like So he's coming up with new ways to like pitch it to me. <laughs> Like, you know, like people that are on, like his, his girlfriend, you know, wants to talk or like, he's like, dad, I'm learning code. I'm like, oh, you're learning code. Yeah, right. And so let me see it. Like, it's so uh, basically he just like copy paste stuff and Roblox and like, you know, I'm like, you're not learning. I'm like, okay, write me some code right now by hand. <laughs> and he's just like. And he just comes Come up on, with dad. some fucking chicken scratch. <laughs> I'm like, okay, what does this do? He's like, dad, you know, like, he's like, dad, I have to ask you a question. I want to work on my spatial abstract abilities. Do you have any idea how I could do that? <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think of a way. Well, God. the worst part is I don't know code, right? <laughs> so I don't, like, he could be right. And I'm like, totally like, yeah, whatever. He, like, you know what I'm talking about? I'm like, I don't know what he's doing. That's yeah, but that's, I, I would think as a parent, that's one of the hard parts for you guys to say no to because talk about a, a valuable skill for a kid, you know, coming up right now in, in the world that we live in now. You So it's like, and if that's developing that while he's also getting, while he's also having fun with his friends, it's like, ah, man, how do I it's, you know, balance that? It always changes. When I was a kid, my dad had issues with me. I used to watch a lot of TV and then I would read the encyclopedia. You guys know this? I know it's uh, whatever. Weird combo. Yeah, I know. Anyway, <laughs> uh, but I would do this and he would get a upset because Being he's like why tenses. aren't you why aren't you playing why aren't you going outside you know the kids would come knock on the door from the neighbors which i don't want to hang out with them because they were dumb but whatever they'd knock on the door <laughs> and i'd tell my mom tell them i'm not here because i was reading you know the letter you know q in the <laughs> in the encyclopedia <laughs> and so my dad used to be like a little bit like what's going on sounds a big q and anyway yeah. <laughs> oh yeah that's what it is. he was before it was uh, even popular i started it yeah he started <laughs> he's the guy behind the whole thing yeah. Yeah. hey Little did he know, all yeah. these skills would come in, come in handy when I started a podcast <laughs> years later. You know what I'm saying? That's where all your Snapple facts come from. Yeah. Well, I, I know we, we played like crazy too. Like I, there was times where uh, I'd have friends over and we would. We would like we would literally only come out of the room to like go to the bathroom or you know get pizza. Yeah. Or, and I mean, I remember there being like sodas or all along the window seals or everything. By the end of the weekend, we probably drank like two 24 oh, yeah. packs between me and my two friends. I mean, we definitely were not. Not doing well, stuff ideal for dude, you. Dude, well, yeah, 12 to 13, you're just trying to see how long, how late you stay yeah. up. Yeah. You know, that was like half the goal. It was like, ah, oh, I can do it. Dude, speaking of soda, did you hear about the guy who died because he drank uh, one and a half liters of Coca-Cola within an hour it, it, and he died from it? Did you hear about this? What? No. Okay. So I read the Why? title of the article and I thought, how, how would he die from drinking? Right. One and a half liters of Coke. I mean, it's a decent amount. And I thought, how would you die from that? So I thought, did he did he drown his cells from too much fluid? Because you could do that with water, right? If you drink too much it's water, not even a full two liter. Yeah, it's not even that. Yeah, and I'm like, what? what, what and they sell those at A M P M now as like a single so serving. It's like you, a double gulp. Do you want to know what happened? What? So he had he drank a bunch of it, and somehow because obviously Coke produces gas, right? So you burp or whatever. Yeah. It got the gas got blocked. Trapped. It got uh, trapped in his, uh, I think, his small intestines. And it wasn't wasn't releasing. He had lots of pain. Couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. Went to the hospital because he started getting really like something's wrong with me. And because of the gas trapped in his small intestines, it was blocking oxygen from getting to his liver. Oh, so when he finally got to the hospital, shit. the doctors are trying to figure out what was going on. Then they realized, oh, it's this gas that's trapped. They tried to release the gas, but by that point, it was too late, and his, he went to liver failure and died. Whoa! Yes, dude. This is a true story. Holy Whoa. shit! I just read this over the uh, or last night. Wow! I didn't know Man. that you freaking die from gas. Yeah, I didn't even know that could happen. I yeah. mean, I'm like worried for Justin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I push it out, dude. I got no problems, dude. But I'm just, good. Justin's yeah. not dying anytime uh, soon. Uh, Everyone around me. Damn, that's bad. But better you know, out than in is my motto. I read something the other day about uh, Kellogg's in a like a five million dollar class action lawsuit over like one of their like strawberry apple flavors, uh, not tasting enough like strawberry apple and having too much of a pear ingredient. 
How crazy is Wait that? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. So they got was, sued for So look flavor? it up, Doug, to get, so I can get my lawsuit? fruit my fruit right. So basically- I've been missing out on a hell of money. Basically, it was like Shit. one of those like uh, like strudel things or whatever that, yeah. that Kellogg's makes, uh-huh. you know? And yeah. then it had a flavor, like strawberry or what. I don't remember the actual flavor, but it, it, it was like a, a combo, strawberry apple or some bullshit. <clears throat> Hopefully, Doug will find it by the time I'm done. <clears throat> and and the, the, the actual flavoring- didn't have enough of the fruit that it's it's advertised as and had uh, the taste of another fruit. Now, you know, class action lawsuit basically as a lawyer, these freaking yeah. leeches oh, that go man. through, and like, what can we do a lawsuit on to make them- Strawberry make- Pop-Tarts that don't have enough berries. That's what it's- Oh, Pop-Tart. Yeah. What the f- hell? They're, they're expecting berries in the, in a Pop-Tart? You know, the problem is people are just stupid. You're yeah. eating a Pop-Tart. What do you think is going to yeah, be in it's, there? It's- Paste and sugar paste. I'm going to sue Pop Tarts because it doesn't pop when yeah, I eat with it with coloring. That's ridiculous. No, wow, that's wild? a real you thing. Can, that you could even do that, bro. Yeah. You know how much money I've missed out on all the shitty protein drinks I've drank that say they're supposed to taste like strawberry or banana and it tastes like <laughs> crap. Oh yeah, this doesn't have strawberry. Dude, in I just it. don't get that mentality. And uh, I think Courtney was telling what me to about, sue over anything. Dude, there's somebody like with my brother-in-law. I was dealing with this too, like as a place like in Idaho where. Like one of his neighbors, like has like a little drone that he keeps flying over their backyard, and like he will find anything that sort of breaks, like the, no, uh, yeah, the uh, HOA stuff, and like bring it up, and then like sue over like the most minuscule things, and I'm just like, dude, can you imagine having that asshole like it, like in your neighborhood? Well, and then, well, like, and it's like if you retaliate, you know, you go right to the court. That's when you get a pet hawk. Katrina, yeah. Was, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Katrina was just on a, you know, that next door app or whatever like that. Yeah. And it's Halloween right now, and like, there's you know, somebody on there that's like complaining because somebody has a skeleton that's hanging by a rope, and saying that that's offensive. And so they're they were making they're making a big stink about it right now to get them to take it down because of that. Is this their first time? Should being be an, It's got to be an alien. You know, what in the was, hell? People uh, the, are getting silly. It's like we. It's almost skeleton. like they're. Uh, it's almost like you people just sit around and look for things to be. That's exactly what's happening. You know what it is. I think sometimes I think that we're meant to be challenged, and when life is easy, we fu- we have to find shit. We have to find things to be upset with. Yeah, you, know you see that, that other one, yeah. the teacher who got fired for doing like an like an Indian chant, you know, they were she was like t- reading a book, they were like, like a history class or something and she was like doing like the oh, 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 yeah, oh, yeah. and like doing that with the kids like telling a story and f- fired. And that was wow. Gone. Wow. Yeah. What? But that's even more, I mean that's more so than like what you were talking about with the skeleton thing. That's a Halloween. Yeah, yeah but all, all of it it's just like wow, dude, like lose your job. Dude, with- I had a client that used to own all these uh buildings Buildings and, and restaurants would, would rent from him and stuff like that. Yeah. And I remember one day he came in and he was so angry because there was this this lawyer who goes in to his restaurants and to these buildings with a tape measure and goes oh, yeah. in there and measures the faucet from the ground, yep. the toilet paper roll. Yeah. And if it's off by an inch yeah. or a half inch. Reports it. He says, no, this is literally did. Uh, you know, four of your bathrooms were not ADA compliant because they were a quarter inch off here. Oh, he extorts money from them. And he goes, I will, I'm going to take you to court yeah. or you can promise to fix it and pay me to settle. And he's like, if I fight this, it's going to cost me, you know, I don't know, $100,000 or I can pay this piece of shit 20 grand and he has to. What a piece of that shit. That is real. You got to wonder how many like like lawyers do that. You know, a so lot. They, they, oh, know they can get away with that. a lot of scumbags out there. A dude. lot. That dude. Dirty. That's why lawyers are so loved. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 They're all lizard people. Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying the show. Look, if you have kids and you watch this podcast, you probably want your kids to be healthy. So you're only going to feed them the best baby food around. Well, there is a company that is the best. We've actually found it. It's called Serenity Kids. Now, they make grain-free snacks. They make products with grass-fed beef and bone broth, organic vegetables, high in protein, high in healthy essential fats, it's the best baby food. In fact, it's the only store-bought baby food that I give my 11-month-old son. If you're interested in checking them out, if you want your child to be healthy and you want to pick the best stuff, head over to MySerenityKids.com. Again, that's MySerenityKids.com. And then use the code MP20 for 20% off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from Tabish K. How do you know when you've read? 
reached your genetic potential and what is the age that most people reach it? Oh, the, Have you uh, read anything on that? The golden question. Like yeah. The, like it, the age that most people would reach it or <sighs> years of training consistently that you would reach it? Yeah. I mean, if you look at like top, it depends on the sport and it depends mm. on obviously what you're looking for. If you're looking at like body muscular development, you're probably for men somewhere in their mid, early to mid thirties uh, of long training. So probably early thirties. Some sports people reach their peak in their twenties. Like you know, if you're looking at a combat sport, you don't see too many high level combat artists that are you know or, or athletes that are you know over the age of thirty four starts to kind of decline. But you know what's funny about this question is your genetic potential changes based off of your circumstances in the context right. of your life, right? So what is your genetic potential when you're lacking sleep? What is your ge genetic potential when your programming's off? What is your genetic potential when absolutely everything's perfect? And that's what people want to think of. They think of genetic potential as being what's the absolute furthest I could take my body mm. when everything is perfect. Now, we've been working out for a long time. Let me ask you guys a question. When in your life has every absolutely every aspect of your life been perfect yeah. for developing <laughs> your physique? Yeah, That's why this question is kind of one of those Yeah, three. well, I mean, the closest I ever was there was the, that three-year run of competing if mm -hmm. I, where I could say like I was really checking most all the boxes. But even then, you could definitely go in there and pick apart things that I could have optimized or done better um, to continue. So, yeah, I don't think uh, – it's funny because I know a lot of people probably have – reach close to their genetic potential because you've been training for 10, 15 years yeah. consistently without really having too much off. And so you're, you've probably reached kind of the peak of how much total lean body mass, maybe, if we're just talking purely muscle. Yeah. But as far as optimizing your overall health, performance, longevity, you know, muscle, body fat percentage, I mean, there's always so much room to continue to improve everywhere. Yeah, it's a hard thing to kind of pinpoint because for me, it was always like what I was doing was then transferring out to uh, sports performance. And so like, and, and I was only playing sports up till college and then that was it, you know? And so I didn't really have a good gauge of like when that sort of declined. Although my last year I did feel a bit of a, uh, uh, a bit of a decline, but that was mainly due to circumstances and, and me and my consistency kind of leading up into the season with that. But like in terms of like the weight room, I've had, I've, it's been all over the place. Like I've felt like the last, you know, five years have been some of my best years of lifting. Now, when we get a question like this, what do you guys think spurs this? Like, what do you think? Why do you think this person is at? I mean, well, we're totally speculating. I know me know. When, when I used to really wonder this is I wanted to know what I could accomplish. Like, what's my limit? How far can I take my body? Oh, uh, see, now I think uh, I remember thinking this, and I think that when you hit a really hard plateau, mm. people start asking because they're wondering, sure. like, oh, this maybe this is it for me. Sure, you know, right. I've already added so much muscle. I've been training for five plus years or whatever. You know, I'm curious to know, am I, maybe I'm reaching yeah. my genetic potential this right a, now. This is a trap. I mean, I, I mean, speak, personally speaking, my, my PRs and my lifts happened in my early to mid thirties. I would say that's when I hit like some of my heaviest lifts, but let me tell you why this is a trap. If you're always training for the end result, you're going to be disappointed at some point because at some point you get older at some point you can't possibly get stronger otherwise we'd have 7 year olds you know deadlifting 5000 pounds or whatever at some point things are de going to decline how do you stay consistent yeah the way you get, you stay consistent is you enjoy the process you have to enjoy the the workout for the workout itself otherwise you're screwed because <laughs> You're going to get stuck in a situation where you're like, oh my God, my body now is going backwards because well, I'm 50. Think of it or, like this. It's like a, a professional athlete asking, you know, where, when I'm, when am I going to max out at getting better? Yeah. Like at some point, if you're a pro, okay, you're probably at towards the top, but you don't ever stop practicing yes. and trying to get better and improving every aspect. And there's different metrics there though, too. Like say it's not the physicality, but like your game smarts, yes. like put you ahead of everybody else because of the time that in the reps you've put in. And so I just think that it's, it's all based off of what you're sort of determining this. Cause for me, it would be like, if I read this question and I, it would probably be like my twenties because like, I didn't think about anything. You know, and then all of a sudden, you know, I was at my peak and then, you know, everything I did built muscle and then it just sort of like tapered. I had to then really pay attention to what yeah, I was doing. And if you look at studies, I mean, actually, I, I read this the other day. It's interesting. I read an, it was an article. Oh, maybe I saved it. But anyway, it talked about 
the peak age for different uh, abilities. Like the best age for learning new languages, mm. I think was seven or something like that, right? The peak age for earning potential for men, 48. So 48 oh, generally, cool. I know, isn't that cool? Because yeah. we're all, you know, 40. The yeah, peak age a for- years. Now that makes you're sense. You're fucked, Doug, though. We're not going to be able to pay you anymore. Just I mean, you're at your all-time yeah. high there, buddy. Damn it. Yeah. 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 Even if we do better, you're tapped. Yeah. I think the peak <laughs> age for like winning a Nobel Peace Prize was like 60-something or whatever. Or, anyway, it's it's all very interesting, but there's a lot of factors that go into it. You you said something very interesting, right? Who's that? the quarterback that's like in his 40s? Tom Brady? Yeah. And he was just crushing, right? Yeah. And how old was he? How old Still is. He? Still is 40s? crushing. Yeah, he's in his 40s mm -hmm. now. Right. Now, is it because physically he's probably, is he more, is he faster than he was when he was in no, his late No, definitely 20? not. He's more efficient. And he's smarter. Yes. He's wiser, I yeah. should say, right? No, it's a great analogy because I definitely know that I've probably seen like the most muscle and I may mm -hmm. never even ever get to that point again in my life. But even today, uh, the things that what I improve on is I less effort and I can achieve mm -hmm. similar or better things than I was able to achieve when I was 20 something. Mm -hmm. So even if I like can say that I've seen the most muscle mass or reached the genetic potential of how much muscle my body can carry, I've gotten smarter and wiser about how I get there. Yeah. And, and, and it's taken less effort to maintain a physique that I was hammering myself for in the, my 20s trying to reach. So there's other parts that you continue to get better at, even, even if you've reached your max muscle yeah, You know potential. how to quickly adjust on the fly, yeah. you know, to stay ahead of these plateaus or, you know, aches and pains. Like there's just, there's a lot more playbooks that you've acquired, uh, you know, to navigate through all that stuff. Yeah. Well, here's a good example. Uh, the, a man's, generally speaking, a man's testosterone, right? The anabolic hormone testosterone peaks at about 18. It's rare to find an 18-year-old that will build more muscle than a 29-year-old, right? If they it, both same training experience and all that stuff, 29-year-old typically will build more muscle than 18-year-old. So there's a lot more that goes into this than just hormone levels and physical whatever. There's there's your wisdom and your application. But again, yeah, this is a trap because at some point, Father Time is going to slap you in the face. And if you're constant, if you're so focused and obsessed with the end result, you will be in a whole world of pain. You will eventually f find yourself stopping because you're going to feel like, what's the use? I can't get any faster. I can't get any buffer. I can't look any better. No matter what I do, my body ages. You have to, at some point, just love the process for the process itself. Otherwise, you're going to be totally screwed. Agreed. Next question is from Krista Marie C. Can you overconsume protein? Yeah, of course Absolutely. you can. Okay, so from a, a fat gain perspective, too many calories, regardless of where they come from, proteins, fats, or carbs, will get stored as body fat. Now, protein is so satiating. In other words, it fills you up. It's less likely to overeat protein than it is to eat, overeat carbohydrates and fats, and especially the combination of carbohydrates and fats, which typically, if you throw salt on top of that, that's like the magic uh, you know, trio. So, but that being said, yeah, you can eat too much protein and forget the fat gain. For some people, eating too much protein leads to constipation and digestive issues as well, in which case, and that's more individualized, right? That that can determine whether or not, you know, you're eating too much for yourself. Now, is that tied into like a buildup of uric acid and gout? I know like rich foods and, and like alcohol and stuff too, is, you know, those are yeah, that's an individual thing too. But yeah. yes, if you have issues with gout or not your body not getting rid of uric acid, then yeah, your protein limit is going to be lower than someone who doesn't have those issues. Yeah, I never really, I never had any problems with anybody who was eating whole foods and wasn't in the like the bodybuilding space in this case. Yeah. yeah, unless you had a special condition like that. So I've dealt with gout and I've had clients that have issues with just digestion. Period. And so then everything is kind of an exception to the rule. But for the majority, it, most people under consume protein. And if they were eating whole foods, it wasn't a problem. The times where I saw it was when you with competitors, because competitors look at protein. And they as throw like, shakes on top of everything. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. you know, they're having three shakes and two bars on top of, you know, two pounds of beef in the day uh, every day. And they're trying to get, you know, 300, 400 grams of protein, thinking it's like this m magical macronutrient. And then you see their, their digestion get fucked up from that. And you see them issues with, and their stools all fucked yeah. up. So, that's the only time I really dealt with it. Most people um, don't get enough protein intake, so the messaging tends to be like more, more, more. But yeah, of course, there's a threshold yeah. and there's a, a too much. For I will somebody. say this though: mm -hmm. it's it's harder to overconsume protein. Way hard. I mean, think of it this way: 
I could easily sit down and eat 100 grams of carbs, and I wouldn't even blink, right? 100 grams of fat, it's, I could do that too. Yeah, easy. 100 grams of protein, put 100 grams of lean whole food protein Oof. in front of you. Like, how much chicken breast would that be, Adam? That's yeah, like, yeah, that's like uh, six, 12, you're over a pound. You're pounding uh, almost a pound and a half of chicken. Just pure yeah. chicken breast. Yeah. Like, try eating that at a that's sitting. That's a chore. Good yeah. luck. Yeah. Like, that's one of the reasons why people lose weight on, like, carnivore diets, is it just crushes your appetite. Yeah, you it's don't want really it. hard to just consume that many calories from only that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't worry about over... For the most part, I don't worry about over-consuming protein. Now, I know there's people that will say... Too much protein can elevate mTOR, and that can lead to cancer, and this and that. Context matters a lot. In a pro-cancer environment, carbohydrates, sugars, and proteins can feed cancer just because cancer is cells. In a healthy context, you're fine. mTOR is not bad unless you have cancer that's active, in which case, yes, you do want to depress mTOR. But if you don't have cancer... You can elevate mTOR, you'll just build more muscle and have better performance. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. And definitely not too much about over-consuming protein. It's, that's, I mean, in my, I, for as long as I've worked with people, I don't know, I'm trying to think, have I ever had anybody, yeah. except for people who threw shakes on top only, of everything? Yeah, only the bodybuilding yeah, yeah. Only the people no that problem. were like either competing themselves or into that that space where they're following the people that are giving advice there that are telling like, you know, you need to get two times your body weight yeah. and protein, you know. So if you're getting that messaging and you're trying to do that or you're in that space, that was the only time where I'd look at someone's diet and be like, what the fuck are you doing? You're already getting 150 grams through Whole Foods. Why are you drinking three shakes and two bars a day? Yeah. Like, well, because I heard that the if I get two times that uh, I'll max potential ability of muscle. It's like no, you're fine, bro. You can you can cut out all that. Next question is from Kony Chua. Is it normal to progress on some lifts but regress on others at the same time? If not, what could be the problem? Of course, you can, but it's not as common. Usually, really to regress while progressing. Yeah, I, I would say it's more common to progress on one and not re regress on another one. But it's less common for my like, oh, oh my God, I'm so much strong in my overhead press. And then I go and squat and my squat went way down. Because mm -hmm. usually if you're stronger, that means that overall there's a good environment. doesn't mean you're going to get stronger at everything. Oh, uh, well, I can give you an example. Well, okay, so progress and regress, less likely. Yes. Progress and, and stay the same. Very common. Uh, very, very common. Yeah. But put, even could potentially regress depending on how you do it. And an example that I see all the time is – it, let's say you. this is a new lift for you. Maybe you've never really deadlifted consistently, and so you start doing it. And what's great about that is your, the gains and the yeah. progress is like – because it's you're you're learning the movement, so there's this amazing like learning curve of just constantly seeing yourself level up, level up, level up, and you could be seeing that while also diet not being ideal, sleep not being ideal, and you may not be doing so on the lifts that you've been doing forever. So maybe you've been bench pressing forever, right? Mm -hmm. But you've never deadlifted consistently in your life until you start listening to mind sure. pump. You're like, these guys always talk about deadlifting. I'm going to start doing it. So you start doing it and you're like, man, I'm getting good and good at deadlifting, but man, my bench is either staying the same or I even had a bad week and got worse. Yeah, well, when you, in and this is where the context matters, is if you are learning a new movement, Sometimes you will see even progress in that lift, even when all other things are shitty, like your diet's kind of off, your sleep isn't well. It's because the deadlift is so new and you're improving on the movement every single time, but then it's starting to affect the other things that you've already gotten pretty good at. And so you regress in that area. So in a situation like that, that you, makes sense. You would be surprised. Yeah, the reason why else. I would say it's not as common, except for that's a really good example that you gave Adam is because when you're regressing on lifts, let's say you're overtrained or you know, you're know you overdoing a lift or you're lacking sleep, typically it's a systemic thing. Right, You'll notice mm -hmm. it all over. Like mm -hmm. I'm just weaker overall. Now you could definitely overtrain a movement, cause some problems and other movements not so much and still improve, but that's more rare. Yeah. So I would say in this particular case, it's probably either what Adam's saying or the lift that you're regressing in you may need to look at your programming. Like, okay, here's a good example. Deadlifts and squats, right? If you're, you could, you could, your deadlifts could go up, but maybe the way you're programming your workouts is that your deadlifts are now affecting your squat because I deadlift mm. the day before yeah. I squat. So my, oh, my deadlift went at 50 pounds. Then you go to squat and your posterior chain is fried and your squat goes well, down. Well, I mean, and I've definitely noticed this in terms of like the time length in between of when I haven't um, been practicing one of the major lifts. Like, so there was, there was a period where I didn't bench 
uh, for a substantial amount of time because I was like so focused on getting better at pull ups, getting better at pulling movements, and and then going back, I definitely went down substantially uh, in terms of performing my bench press. But it was just because I wasn't uh, stimulating that 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 muscle group like I used to. Like, it, but it was just it was a time length thing, and it really came back pretty quickly. Uh, but it was it, to see that sort of take on, uh, you know, uh, uh, progression with with my uh, ability to, to pull up was substantial. And then I, I definitely fell off on bench. This question actually highlights a, a really cool strategy um, that I used to do because we, we talked about this, right? When you're in a caloric deficit and you're trying to do like a cut, like a really hard cut. Like one of the hardest parts is the, the mental hurdle, right? Because yeah. you get weaker in everything. So one of the strategies I used to do on cuts, since I'd be I was doing it so frequently, is I would actually pick up a a new exercise that I wasn't doing, like I hadn't done in a really long time. Like, like example of one that comes to mind right away, and it was during when we were competing. It was during when we were writing programs, and the circus press was just not like a, mm -hmm. a common exercise that I had done in the past. And I'm in a and I'm in a major cut, and I'm getting weaker on everything, you know, because I'm, I'm cutting drastically, consistently for weeks for a show, and so I'm watching my bench go down, I'm watching my deadlift go down. But then all of a sudden, I introduce the circus press consistently into my routine, and I'm actually getting stronger mm. every week. And so it actually would be, and I would actually try and focus on that and not let the other things fuck with me because I know that I'd already kind of mm -hmm. maxed that out, and I'm watching that. So. I, I like this question for that reason because it, it this could happen and I, I always think that a lot of what we we do with you know training to get in really good shape a lot of it's this this mental warfare that you're constantly playing that playing all the time and a strategy that helped me was when I know that I'm in a caloric deficit and I know I'm cutting consistently and I know I'm going to get weaker it's inevitable mm -hmm. is actually reintroducing movements that I don't do frequently into my routine so I have like a win. So I can be like, oh, cool, that's getting This stronger. used to happen to me when I'd cut, and I'd be cutting, and then I'm like, wow, I could do more pull-ups, and I realize because I'm lighter. <laughs> yeah, because you're 20 yeah, pounds lighter. Yeah, oh, yeah there's that. Lighter. There's also that, yeah. <laughs> Next question is from Lore Pat. What is your take on certain vegetables being toxic? Toxic. Is it BS, or would we be better off not eating certain types? It has been going around that vegetables have natural defense mechanisms to protect themselves, but because of that, they can be harmful. All right. Paul, Paul so talks about natural this a lot. insecticides. Yeah. So there's some truth to this, but it's also been exaggerated. So I'm going to give you a uh, an analogy or another example that is going to sound ridiculous, but it isn't. Would you eat a cow while it's alive? So let's say a cow's alive and you're just starting to eat its leg. Would that be safe? <laughs> no, it'd be very dangerous because a cow's defense mechanisms are to kick you and bite you and probably kill you, right? It's a big-ass animal. So what do we do to the cow before we eat it? We kill it. Okay. Plants can't kick you. They can't bite you. They can't run away. So they produce toxins to uh, just, just to keep animals from eating them or to demotivate animals from eating them. Great. So what do we do to those plants? We cook them. We, we grind them, them. We boil them, yeah. okay? So this is true, but also humans have adapted to be able to process vegetables and food so they can eat them. For example, eat a raw potato. You're, it's going to mess you up. You eat a raw potato, you are going to have ruined inflammation and digestive issues, and it could probably kill you. Who eats a raw potato? You boil the hell out of it. Then you eat it, mm -hmm. and you're okay. So mm -hmm. I, I get what they're saying with this. And yes, some of the toxins remain. And, and what I'm, I'm not talking about are the highly sensitive individuals mm -hmm. who obviously have autoimmune issues that are, ho or that are going on. Like Michaela Peterson was a great example. She had some autoimmune reactions. And so all of these plants were causing reactions in her. But most people, if you cook vegetables or you process them, like if you grab wheat out of the ground and chew on it, you're going you're gonna to shred your body. But if you mash it up and grind it and then cook it, then most people, or a lot of people, I should say, can can eat the sweet. So it is, there's some truth to this message, but what they've done is they've kind of twisted it and it's just not true well, for everybody. And, and here's, you'll always hear this message uh, talked a lot about in the, you know, keto and carnivore space. So if you're a, a pro all meat diet, <laughs> yeah. then you're going to highlight this all the time as like, but the, 
it, I do think there are people though, and I do yes. like something that Paul says as because I found this interesting because I never thought about this and looked at like what vegetables. I've actually never tried to eliminate certain vegetables in my diet, wondering if maybe it's causing some of my autoimmune issues until listening to Paul talk about this exact topic. And one of the things that he said that I found interesting was I thought, well, I'm not going to get rid of all vegetables, but I want to keep some stuff in there. And I don't, I obviously don't think that it's from all of these vegetables, but maybe it could be from some, some outliers and, uh, your body, it's easier for your body to digest flowering parts yes. of vegetables versus like the stem. Yeah. Cause your the, the plants protect, uh, certain parts of it more right. than others, and it wants the, the fruits like the offering. That's yes. right. Here, yeah, the the animals come by, they they nab that, and then it's like they leave it alone. Exactly. So if you're somebody who eats like a lot of asparagus and you eat the whole entire thing, you're the the flowering part of of vegetables are less likely to have these higher toxins and defense mechanisms from animals eating it. So maybe looking at that and going like, okay, what what vegetables are like flower have flowering? And there's truth to this, like. We don't need to cook and boil our fruit in order to eat it. You can right. eat a fruit raw. I can eat yeah, an apple right. raw. I can eat a strawberry raw. Um, asparagus, I'm sure if I just eat the tip raw, I'll be, I'll be a little better off than if I eat the, the bottom part or yeah. whatever. But that's why we cook and process. It's just, it's, look, here's the deal. It's why we cook meat too. Could I eat raw meat? You can eat raw meat. Why do humans cook meat? It allows our body, it, cooking meat actually- It's part of the digestion. It partially digests the yeah. food, unlocks a lot of the nutrients, and scientists, evolutionary scientists, strongly believe this is one of the reasons why our brains got so big. Mm -hmm. We were able to cook this super, and yes, me, this is true now, meat is the most nutrient-dense food on the planet. If you're living in the wild, you're not. You're probably not going to survive just eating plants. It's not going to happen. You have to figure out how to grow on your, your own plants and- create the right combination, you're going to die unless you catch some well, meat and then you're probably going to survive. Not to mention, plus it, it lowers the risk factor with like, uh, you know, certain bacteria and parasites that totally. you could get uh, from the raw meat. So it's like, it's just one of those things we, we hacked and Dude, figured out. I figured out for myself, look, I have gut issues, okay? I figured out for myself that lots of vegetables help with my gut issues, but I have to cook them really well. You guys have seen how I eat them, right? Yeah. I boil the crap out of them. Yeah. Then I can eat them, and they actually help my digestion. If I eat raw vegetables, sometimes they can bother me. But, I mean, we've been processing foods forever, just like we do with meat. Just like I said, like the same example would be you know, eating an animal while it's alive. Very dangerous, but I got to kill it and cook it, and now I can eat it. Yeah. Plants, you know, this is why the raw vegan movement to me is very interesting because they're taking out that element. And I know some people can get away with it, but I don't know. Have you ever tried to eat lots and lots of raw vegetables? Ugh. It'll it'll wreck your gut very you quickly. You're talking about having trapped gas, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I would explode. Now, that doesn't mean, too, though, that there's not value in somebody who is dealing with autoimmune issues. Totally. And they've tried different things to eliminate, and they can't get to the bottom of it. And totally. They're, and, they've been, and that's why I, I, this, this conversation does need to be had, and I think it's important because – you don't think vegetables, just like I'm sure Doug probably didn't think avocado was, you know, causing issues with his skin and stuff like that. You think it's a healthy food. Everyone talks about yes. it's a super food. It's so, it's so great for us. So if you have this really good diet um, and avocado is a part of that or asparagus is a part of that, and it's just, you don't think of, you think of it as a health food. You don't think that it's p possibly flaring up my psoriasis or causing my other auto autoimmune stuff I have going on. And so if you're trying to get to the bottom of that, and then you hear a message like this, like, hey, not a bad strategy to potentially eliminate that veg a, a vegetable that you eat all the time that could be do dealing doing that. If you're an average person and you're healthy and you don't have any autoimmune issues, then this means nothing to you. Yeah. And you're you know what, you're right, because we also we always need to consider because generally speaking, we can list foods by more or less healthy, depending on the nutrients and what they provide us. But you can't ignore your individual body. That's right. You cannot do that. Like I've had I, I have had to learn this lesson with clients over and over to the point where I finally gave in and said, everybody's different. And I remember having a client yeah. that it, it was meat. Meat did not make them meat, feel good. I think you share a banana one, right? I had a client. Like avocado who, over here. I mean, these are foods that you yeah. consider very healthy. That's right. Spinach. And, yeah. That's right. And at one point, I remember thinking dairy. Oh, dairy's bad. We're not meant to drink milk. But you look at the literature and you look at when people don't have intolerance to dairy and you realize it's one of the healthiest foods ever, unless- you react to it like I do. I can't have dairy, right? right? So you have to consider general what's healthy and then your individual body. Do not ignore your individual body because it can be almost anything that'll bother you. 
Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our guides. We have guides on developing your arms or your midsection or your legs or your back. We even have guides for personal trainers. Much, much more, by the way. Fat loss guides and more. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. And you can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Sal. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. <laughs>